we were um, living in a little apartment in Chicago in toward the end of 1980. And again, following the clues in the Isham book, I decided we should pay a visit to Delavan, Wisconsin, where um, some of the um, some of the uh, Ishams had their home for a couple of generations. So I'll just come over here because I want to collect the um, I want to collect the the timelines that uh, I previous, previously showed you. And uh, the, uh, if you'll remember this one, this little uh, mnemonic uh, for remembering the ancestors. And what we're, what we're going to look at is um, Enoch, who moved to, made the move from Connecticut, where he was living. The family had lived for a couple of generations. Uh, to um, New York, um, where he had a farm for a number of years, and then on to um, Wisconsin. And he was the Enoch was the one who lived to a great age, uh, 90, 94, I think. And uh, William, his son, was the notable person, and Frank, notable public figure, I should say. And Frank, his son, was born there. So that's, those were the people that I thought maybe I would see if I could investigate a little bit more about before, I think at that point, we had decided to return to Australia. Of course, Luke was not quite two years old then. So uh, we packed up. Uh, a couple of things for the rest of the day in the little red car that we had and uh, drove up to Delavan, Wisconsin, not really knowing whether we'd find anything of interest relating to the family or not. And um, as it turned out, after I think just one inquiry, I was directed to uh, a um, Mr. Spooner who ran a hardware store in, uh, in uh, Bellman, which is kind of interesting because one of the things that William Willard did, of course, was to run, I think after his carriage making business, he had a, a hardware business in uh, partnership with someone else. Mr. Sturdivant, I think. So um, I walked into the hardware store and found Mr. Spooner, and um, he seemed quite a, a doer, but agreeable man. And uh, it wasn't long before he invited us to his house. And within a very few minutes, we were up in his attic, uh, opening up an old trunk and pulling out some photographs. And it turns out that this randomly met Mr. Spooner had um, an uncle who had been married to... Frank Isham's sister, Lena. And he showed us a picture of Lena. I can't hold it up because it's in an album in storage, but I will make another video that includes that picture. So, uh, so uh, we, um, we had an interesting uh, time making that connection in that very short interval, and he told me about a woman, Mrs. Holtz, um, 
who was a descendant of not of Lena, but of a of another of a brother of Frank's named Charles. And sure enough, I had um, a letter from her a bit down the track, uh, saying, telling me a, a bit about her ancestry and she gave me some pictures. So this is Frank Isham, my um, great-grandfather Frank Isham. Uh, this is his brother. And so I, I don't have a picture of Frank but if there's a family resemblance, then maybe he looked a little bit like this. So here, here he is um, uh, later in life, and then as a young man, uh, Charles Turnbull Isham, Frank's brother. So, uh, so that was that was interesting. Um, I was also when I was upstairs in the attic with um, Mr. Spooner. He gave me a picture of the man who had married Lena. So that's him standing up there. The, um, the man who married Lena. Apparently, it wasn't a very happy marriage. And I expect that divorce was quite rare in those days. But they were divorced. And... Um, so uh, that, that's interesting because um, Frank and the um, lady that uh, he married uh, ended up being divorced too. So whether there was some uh, temperament in the family that uh, didn't um, make a good job of relationships, I'm not sure. But I want to make a video about Frank, and so I'll leave a bit of that. There's a bit to be said about him. I'll leave a bit of that for um, for later on. But this uh, here's a little chart that gives a picture: the Isham Delavan Wisconsin connections. Enoch was the one that we talked about. He was married to Mary, and uh, had. It was in Connecticut, went on to New York, and then on to Delavan, died at a great age. Then William was the man who was a public figure, businessman, longtime trustee of the Institute for the Deaf, which I believe is still uh, there, although maybe different euphemisms have entered the title, maybe the hearing impaired or something. I didn't actually look it up, but the, the School for the Deaf I believe is still in Delavan. Uh, that and it was quite a significant institution. And I, I mentioned William had had a uh, stint, short stint as a, as a politician, in the Wisconsin State Legislature, and also that um, he. Um, oh, uh, the, the one thing that came up. Uh, just had a look. He even had a license to run a ferry over the uh, Wisconsin River. So he was he was a uh, sort of a enterprising person. Uh, Frank, Charles, and Lena were his children, and I made interesting connections uh, with them. And um, Frank, uh, Frank, of course, had one child, Edgar, um, who was my um, grandfather. Okay, uh, if you wanted to follow up st with Street View, I've got some details here. Uh, if you wanted the old house, which isn't, it's a two-story old place where... Uh, was, as, as far as I understand, was pointed out to me um, as the um, William Isham home is on the north 
sorry, southwest corner of Washington and 3rd Street. So you can street view that. And the business that he ran was on um, the southwest corner of Walworth and 2nd Street. Um, nothing much there left from before. Okay, um, I uh, think I might leave it there. The um, <clears throat> just realizing that, um, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up just there.